Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, oh, just as you are to worship. Oh, oh come, just as you are before your Sing that together. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, oh, now is the time to give your heart. Oh, come, oh, just as you are to worship. Oh, oh, come, just as you are.
turn that into a prayer. Sing, open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart, Lord Jesus. Open the eyes. I want to see you. I want to see you. You are with me, Lord. Open my eyes. Open my eyes, oh God. My heart, Lord. This morning, as he was rounding up our prayer time, he said, Lord, our expectations are high this morning. I don't know about you, but my expectations are high this morning. My expectations are high this morning. And the Bible says that it was in the year that King Uzziah died that Isaiah went into the temple. He had been to church many Sundays. He had been to church many Sabbaths. He had been to church many times before. But on that day, something happened. Something happened. The man walked in there and suddenly the heavens were opened. And this man saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the train of the Lord filled the temple. And Isaiah was never the same again. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you this, this morning. Let us press into the presence of God. I sense that the heavens are pregnant this morning. God wants to say something to us. God wants to do something in us. But our attitude must be right. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing that song just one more time. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart. Lord, I want to see you. He was reading in the book of John chapter 4 verse 23. He says, the hour cometh and now is when the 
when you know the true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth there are many hours in time there are many hours in the ages there are many hours in the, in the years but the bible says there is a peculiar and particular hour and the bible says that when that hour arrives that the true worshipers they will begin to do something they will begin to worship the father in spirit and in truth and that hour is now that moment is now that time is now so let us press into the presence of god this morning in jesus name amen let's sing it just one more time hallelujah sing open the eyes sing open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see What areas have you been blind? Open my eyes, God. Open the eyes of my heart, Let me know that you are here. Open the eyes of my heart, Help me know that you are never leave. I want to see you in my situation, God. I want to see you working. I want to see you, Lord, open. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
find rest. You can find healing. You can be restored. You can be renewed. If we can sing one more song, I want you to release all here in the presence of God. Because it's one thing to sing about it, but it's another thing to actually let stuff go. People hurt you, you have pains. You are weary, there is a situation that you've been in, that's been a storm, there's been a wilderness that you've been going through. Let's acknowledge the presence of God in this place as we sing this one last song. Let us be sincere before God. Really let go. That's one thing that he cannot do for us. He cannot take it from us. We must hand it over. Judges 6, it talks about the angel of the Lord going and sitting down under a tree. 
and appears to Gideon and says, God is with you, O mighty warrior. And the first thing that Gideon did was object. God, is, how can he be with me? He's abandoned us to the Midianites. The first thing he did was object and to speak against the word of the Lord. That's a pretty powerful response in the wrong way. He didn't believe, he doubted. And it says in verse 14 that God faced him directly and said, go in the strength that is yours. Haven't I just sent you? And we all know the story of Gideon, how he still was fearful and afraid and put several tests out before the Lord to make sure. First he wanted to cook him dinner, then he wanted to put a fleece on the ground and did that twice and just testing the Lord and testing the Lord. And you know, we really get caught up with the scripture that says, don't put the Lord to the test. But what we fail to remember is that the tagline that happens after that, as they did, I believe it's Gilgal. And what happened in that place when they tested the Lord at that time is that it was with grumbling. It wasn't with asking for assurances. God is not afraid to be tested in the right sense. And you see this patient love demonstrated for Gideon through every test, every step of the way, because God was after one thing, the man of God, the warrior of God, strengthened him. And to this end, towards the end of, of, of his preparation, God tells him to go down in the, into the camp of the enemy. As he walked into the camp of the enemy, he overheard a dream that someone had in a prophetic interpretation, and it says that he was strengthened there in the enemy's camp. And I think this morning that there are, there are those of us who are in different places along this journey. There are those of us who can't believe that God would use us, that we, we have a hard time accepting that we're prepared. We have a hard time taking hold of what God has placed within us in terms of giftings and callings. There are, then there are those of us who are somewhat afraid. And we're asking the Lord, God, show me. Show me. I need to know. I, I, I have a hard time believing this. I want to believe, as, as the guy said to Jesus, I believe but help my unbelief, right? I think there are those of us who are there today. And then I think there are those of us that God has said, okay, it's time to go. And the first step along the way towards preparation many times is adversity. And we're finding ourselves in the camp. And we need God's strength. What encourages me, no matter where we are, and I have been in every one of these situations, what encourages me on this journey is that God has an answer for every place. And his heart is steadfast in every place. None of these places where Gideon was ever upset God. He never became angry with Gideon, and he's not angry with us. He's only after one thing, for you to become who he's called you to become, for you to do what he's called you to do, for you to be that kingdom warrior, witness of the earth. So if you're here this morning and you're perhaps in that first place, not really feeling that God has called you or gifted you and you feel like you have a desire to do something, but you're unsure, raise your hand. If you're in that place where you know you're called to something, but it's been a difficult thing to, to believe and take hold of, and you're, you're a bit apprehensive that what he showed you is bigger than you think he can do, raise your hand. And if you're in that place now where he's told you to move and you're scared to death and you find yourself surrounded by adversity, raise your hand. God, here we are. Here we are, Lord. We are yours. We are your inheritance. We are your people. 
we are the structure that you set up on the earth for the kingdom to come through. You've set us here as ambassadors. You've set us here as people to display the glory of God, the glory of the Father. So this was your idea in the beginning. In the end, it will be to your glory. And right now, it's by your grace. So Lord, we thank you that we're not who we used to be by your grace. We thank you that we will become what you've called us to become by your grace. And therefore, Lord, we thank you and we rest in your grace. We ask you, Lord, right now, come and encourage. Come and strengthen. Bring strength and adversity right now, Lord. And those who need it, Lord, bring strength and adversity. Lord, and those who aren't sure and those who are afraid, Lord, bring courage right now, Holy Spirit. We ask you. For those of us who need to see, come in and with revelation. Reveal to us your purposes. Reveal to us the call, the plan. And Lord, I pray that River of Life would become one of those houses where kingdom purposes are realized. Lord, that this would be a place where we have grace and, and ability and kindness to speak into each other's lives and help each other see the path that we're on. Lord, that this house would be full of people who know their assignment and help others find their place. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And as Sister Becky comes, one quick thing. We... We have an assignment that we need help with. One, and the assignment is with our projection ministry. We have uh, Tony who's helping really strongly. And we need someone else to give a hand. And this can be someone from high school age uh, to adult. And if you are interested in this, there are some prerequisites. And I'd like to talk to you. Just come see me. Thank you. Adversity. <laughs> Lots of adversity right now. Um, I want to welcome you today, and I want to make sure each and every one of you have one of these, so let me see them. If you don't, I'm going to ask that the ushers come by and bring you one. Okay. I don't see very many of them. <laughs> let me see them. Lift your hands high. Hello, are we awake? Good morning. Let me see your bulletins. Are we awake? <laughs> I don't see any over here. Ushers, please make sure everybody has one of these. It's very important that we look at these because there's a lot of things going on in our church that if we're not aware, we're not going to be connected. Okay? So I'm going to make sure everyone has one of these because I want us to look at our vision together. Our vision is a kingdom-minded people who want to see our families and community transformed by the Spirit of God and to see Jesus glorified. And our mission, River of Life exists to be a transformational community where people can believe, be long, be long, in our society, people are struggling because they don't feel like they belong. This is a place that you need to feel you belong and become. We seek to build better relationships with God, our families, and community. As I welcome you today, is there anyone here today who's visiting us for the first time? If you are, please let me see your hand. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anybody else? We have been praying for you. It's not an accident that you are here. If you would see us after service, uh, we have a special gift for you for, for visiting with us today. So please, I want to encourage everyone to um, welcome our brother today. Make him feel welcomed. Uh, ooh, okay. 
So um, 32nd River of Life hug attack. Go. our tithes and offerings, and if the ushers would please come forward. I've got to move through this very quickly, so go with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. 1 Chronicles chapter 29. And David the king said to all the assembly, Solomon, my son, whom God alone has chosen, is young and inexperienced. And the work is great, for the palace will not be for man, but for the Lord God. So I have provided for the house of my God so far as I was able. The gold for the things of gold, the silver for the things of silver, and the bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, and wood for the things of wood besides great quantities of onyx and stones for setting, autonomy, colored stones, all sorts of precious stones and marbles. Now, if you would go down with me a few verses down to verse 9. It says, Then the people rejoiced because they had given willingly, for with a whole heart they had offered freely to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. In this passage, what is happening is the Lord has told David in chapter 28, because David at this point has a heart to build a temple for the Lord, a house for the Lord. But the Lord told him that he was not the one to build the temple that his son Solomon, who was young and inexperienced, was the chosen vessel for that specific task. And although David knew he was not the chosen vessel for that task, he still had a heart for it. So what did he do? He gave from his precious treasures. He gave from his own treasures to build the house of the Lord. And he didn't do it begrudgingly. He did it joyfully. David was a man after God's own heart. And he gave joyfully. He gave willingly. And that's how the Lord wants us to give. He wants us to give freely, willingly, Remember, in the New Testament, it says that God loves a cheerful giver. And I think that that's what this passage is telling us. And I think it's important that we we recognize that he was also trying to help his son. Because he knew he had more experience than his son, but he was trying to help him along. And instead of complaining because he knew that he was not the chosen vessel to build the house, he still gave from his precious treasures. 
to build the house of the Lord. So today I ask you that you give cheerfully, that you give willingly. He went to the people and also asked the people to give. And they came and they also gave willingly and cheerfully. So today I ask that you give what the Lord has put upon your heart to give and that you give willingly and cheerfully in the name. Hallelujah. Uh, we just wanted us to know that we're having a very special dance presentation on this Pentecost Sunday. Um, Sister Lisa Weiss and the rest of the crew, uh, Sarah, uh, Cassandra, who wasn't able to make it, and Alicia Dix, and you know, Winter, and a bunch of other ladies have been meeting and uh, they have not come to perform, they have come to minister. So as you watch, receive ministry from them in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big hand again. Hallelujah. Such pomp, such pageantry for our Lord and King. Because he deserves it. And a people would declare his glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is deserving. What you saw is nothing compared to what the angels are doing in heaven. Do I have an amen? And it shall get stronger in this house. In the name of Jesus. Because you, you know that, you know, where kings and queens are, before they show up, you know, people go before them. There's a lot of pomp. There's a lot of pageantry. Because an earthly king, earthly royalty is coming in. How much more a lord of lords and the king of kings. Hallelujah. And as I was standing over there and, and, and I was watching all that, I mean, you know, I, I just felt like, Lord, you deserve this. Hallelujah. We, you deserve every ounce of, of pomp and appreciation that we can give you. Do I have an amen? And I just want to say a very big thank you again to Zelda and, uh, and Lisa and Winter and everybody and, and all, all those who have spent time. It takes just a couple of minutes, but they've been meeting on Sundays, they've been meeting on Thursdays, and just because they wanted to do this with a spirit of excellence. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, I want us to pay very special attention to one of the inserts inside your church bulletin. And it is about the, it is about the global day of prayer. Now, I want you to listen to me and listen very well. The Global Day of Prayer is an event, and we're going to be showing a very quick video shortly, but it is an event that, that began more than 10 years ago, but it is now a global event. It is an event that is happening in every nation. It is happening, uh, it is happening in Syria. It's happening in Saudi Arabia. It's going on in Mozambique. It's going on in Uruguay. It's going on in the Netherlands. It is in every nation of the earth. Zimbabwe, mention it, it, it is going on. Now, the global day of prayer was not being observed in the city of Kedi until River of Life came. Now, I am, and this, we've never said this because it is like one of those secrets, but I need to let you know this today, that, that the Global Day of Prayer was being observed in other places, but not in the city of Kedi until the Lord sent us here. And when the Lord sent us here, River of Life began to organize other churches. And today there are about 45 to 50 different churches that join us during the Global Day of Prayer. And it's going to be happening tonight. Why am I saying this? Many of us do not know. We think the event is their event. In reality, <laughs> it is our event. We are the ones that God has called to. We initiated this in the city and we lead it in the city. And I am saying that to you so that you will know to be there tonight. So that you will know to be prayed. It's not them, it's us. Somebody say, it's not them. It's not them. It is us. Do I have an amen? So I want to encourage you. And, and I mean, pastors of mega churches join us. They respond to our call that please, we need to do this. And they come and they bring their congregations, how much more we will lead and initiate it. So I don't know what your schedule or program is for this evening, but I really want to encourage you to be there because we need, if we have been called to lead and initiate it, then we need to show that kind of leadership. And it's not Brother Falu, it's not the elders, it is us. Because the body of Christ is much more than one man or much more than one person. Do I have an amen? Let's watch this quick video and then after that we're going to listen 
to the message. Go for it. For it, amen. Hallelujah. God says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, it is a season that we must humble ourselves and we must pray. Amen. We have, this is a season of what? Who remembers? This is a season of fat things. Hallelujah. It is a season of fat things. My wife said, you know, don't use the word fat things. Because my wife says, you know, we need to be health, health conscious. And I said, 
I'm not the person who said so. It is the Bible. <laughs> Amen. It is a season of fat things. Amen. And um, fat things, you know, rich in wine, rich in marrow. And um, we're going to be having, you know, ministry gifts God that, that God is releasing to come into our midst. And one of them is Brother Ayo Akinbade. I have known him for many years. He has been to over 28 nations. He used to smuggle Bibles into, into China. He is a firebrand. He has been ministering Friday nights. Many of us have been mightily blessed, and he's here tonight. But much more, Jesus is here. Amen. And I, w I want to invite him right now to come grab the microphone and do whatever God is asking him to do. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 